Well, we're back uh, right here on the weekend show, and uh, our guest uh, that we have right here in the studio, we have with us Dr. Manuel Carbello, and uh, Dr. Manuel is executive director at the International Center for Migration Health and Development, Geneva WHO Collaborating Center. Uh, Dr. Manuel, welcome to our program and welcome to the state of Kuwait. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Uh, Dr. Manuel, before we uh, get into uh, what's uh, taking place and so forth, uh, tell us about the purpose of your visit to the state of Kuwait, please. Well, first of all, I'm here because I'm on the International Scientific Advisory Board at the Desmond Diabetes Institute. Um, And also because tomorrow we begin a very important meeting on the link between diabetes and tuberculosis. Uh, At that meeting, we will be bringing international speakers uh, and many national speakers. Uh, The purpose of this meeting is basically to look at the relationship between these two uh, growing problems um, and look at the implications for diagnosis, for treatment, and hopefully for prevention. So how does diabetes and tuberculosis, how does that go together? I mean, a lot of our audience may be wondering, can you elaborate more on that, please? Well, we've always known that there's been a link between the two, and we've always suspected that the, that diabetes reduces the immunological capacity of the body to to fight, Mm -hmm. uh, for example, diabetes and and possibly other diseases. So that is the link. Uh, It's basically an immunological one. But the real problem is that these two diseases, particularly diabetes, is now on the increase. And Kuwait, as you know, is one of the countries that is most affected by Mm -hmm. type 2 diabetes. Uh, Certainly ranks within the top 10 countries in the world. But WHO also advises us that TB is again becoming a problem uh, worldwide. And the difficulty there is that uh, we've always assumed, um, or certainly in the last few years, we've assumed that TB was on the decrease that this was no longer a a global problem, Mm -hmm. a threat. Um, And in fact, the the reality is that it's increasing again. So Dr. Manuel, the big international technical meeting that is going to be held at Desman Diabetes Institute uh, tomorrow uh, night is the registration Mm -hmm. and uh, all of Monday starting in the morning is titled Diabetes and Tuberculosis, Preventing and Managing a double burden. Mm-hmm. And I know there'll be a lot of uh, guests, uh, there'll be some speakers from Kuwait, as well as international speakers uh, with uh, background in these fields. So can you tell us more about the speakers coming from abroad, please? Well, we, um, we have from, from London, from uh, University College London, we have uh, um, uh, Dr. Charlotte Jackson. Um, and from St. George's Hospital, we have uh, uh, Dr. Chrysley, Professor Chrysley. Um, we have from Hawaii, joining us by video link, a very well-known epidemiologist who's been looking at the biophysiological link between these two diseases. So Dr. very Bostrom. sophisticated Desman Diabetes Institute, huh? Doing I think a lot of this uh, video conferencing and so forth. Yeah, well, I think that the Diabetes uh, Institute that you have here, the Desman Diabetes Institute, has really very quickly become one of the foremost international uh, research institutes in the world. And I think certainly in Kuwait, it is beginning to change the the face of diabetes. What we are hoping is that the knowledge that is gained here uh, at the uh, Dasman Diabetes Institute can be gradually shared with other countries in the region and uh, and, and even globally. So now, uh, if some of the audience is watching right now uh, involved in the healthcare fields, uh, Mm -hmm. can they still register for this uh, conference? And if so, can you tell us how? By all means, registration begins tomorrow night at 6 o'clock at the Dasman Diabetes Institute. Um, There's an regi- email, I believe, for a registration. Yes. yes. Um, shall I give you the email? Yes, yes. It is E-M-A-C-L-E-A-N at I-C-M-H-D stop C-H. And there it is right there on the uh, screens right there. So our audience, if they're interested in registering for the Diabetes and Tuberculosis uh, International Technical Meeting, uh, Preventing and Managing a Double Burden. The email is there on the screens uh, right there, so they can uh, jot that down and send in their information, and uh, uh, they will be replied to with any questions they may have. They Uh, can also just show up tomorrow night and register. What time is that, It's free of charge at 6 o'clock in the evening. Um, The registration has been waived so that we can 
open the, the meeting up to as many people as, as possible. Mm. So those who want to come should show up tomorrow night. And certainly if you cannot make it tomorrow night, come Monday morning. And where will it be held at? In the Diabetes Institute. So Desman Diabetes yes. Institute, yeah. 6 p.m. they should 6 be there. 6 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so now, uh, Dr. Manuel, uh, maybe tell our audience a little bit about yourself, a little uh, background. I know you've been uh, in the WHO for numerous years and worked on many campaigns, uh, which we'll be talking about shortly. Mm -hmm. But give us a little background about yourself for our audience watching right here in the state of Kuwait. Well, I'm, I'm basically an epidemiologist. I was recruited by WHO uh, many years ago to work in the area of maternal and child health and um, did so for uh, about 10 years in many parts of the world. Um, and then in 1986, uh, when WHO became concerned about the AIDS epidemic, I was asked to create a, uh, a global program on, uh, on AIDS. And uh, I stayed with that program for about six years as head of research. I know, Dr. Manuel, you've worked uh, a long time with uh, the Director General of uh, Desman Diabetes Institute, Dr. Kadam Bahbahani, for uh, uh, decades. Uh, can mm -hmm. you tell us about that long working relationship, please? Well, I first met Dr. Bahbahani in 1987. Mm -hmm. uh, Almost 30 years now, huh? yes, you know him, huh? that's right. When um, we were beginning the global program on AIDS, and he invited us to come here and to talk about AIDS. So right from the very beginning, he was aware of the nature of this problem and the magnitude of the problem. Um, and then, of course, when he uh, left WHO to come back to Kuwait and to take over the Dasman Diabetes Institute, uh, that link continued, and uh, he invited me to uh, to invite to, to to join him as a member of the International Scientific Advisory Board. So it's been a very privileged relationship that I've had with him. Uh, Dr. Manuel, now you just touched on the International Scientific Advisory Board of Dasman Diabetes Institute which you are a member of. Uh, how do you see Desman's uh, research projects and activities developing over the three or four years that you've been involved in overseeing some of Desman's activities? Mm -hmm. I think the most impressive thing has been the speed with which the uh, Desman Diabetes Institute over the last three to four years has developed. It's grown from being a relatively um, insignificant institute uh, to being one of the most important international institutes in terms of its research, its training, and to some extent its, its clinical uh, research and services. I think that the research that the uh, Dasman Diabetes Institute is developing is relevant particularly to Kuwait and the GCC region, but it's also becoming extremely noted for its genomic research, its basic research, mm -hmm. and its applicability uh, to other parts of the world. So I think that over the space of, as I say, three to four years, uh, the Institute has, uh, has become one of the reference centers uh, globally. Now, as you know, it's been recognized by recently the GCC, yes. by the GCC, and so it is now the reference center for diabetes in the GCC. And I think uh, in that capacity, it's going to provide a tremendous amount of leadership in the region. So you've been very impressed with uh, what Desman has been doing over the past few years then, sir? I've never seen an institute grow in the way that this institute has grown. And I've never seen an institute embark on such a uh, broad range of basic um, and, uh, and applied research. We're now moving into an area of public health research, and that will become increasingly exciting as well for the region. Uh, now, going back a little bit, uh, I know you touched on earlier in our interview, you came the first time here was in 1987, uh, almost 30 years ago, by an invitation mm -hmm. by uh, Dr. Kadam Bahbani, uh, and that was the topic of HIV and AIDS, I believe, a conference mm -hmm. yes. here in Kuwait. Yeah. And you've been leading that at the WHO. I mean, HIV and AIDS, a global problem, and uh, it's, uh, you've had successful programs which you've worked on mm -hmm. at the WHO, and you've taken the initiative on that. Uh, how do you see diabetes now, uh, which many say is even a huger or bigger problem in terms of its impact compared to HIV? And please uh, take some uh, minutes to answer that question, please, sir. Well, you know, the, the AIDS epidemic basically began in 1981. Mm -hmm. And for a period of some four or five years, it remained a disease that was extremely frightening, 
with a very high mortality, a very rapid mortality. And this caught the imagination of the public globally. Mm -hmm. Some very well-known figures uh, died from AIDS. Um, and I think that the, it was that drama that surrounded those deaths that gave AIDS its prominence as an infectious disease issue. Diabetes is not an infectious disease. It is not passed from one person to another. It is in many ways a silent disease. What do you mean by that? El elaborate more on that for our audience who are not too familiar with diabetes, please. Well, first of all, there is probably a large number of people who do not know that they have diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, those who do have it, fortunately today in a country such as Kuwait, are increasingly able to manage their diabetes. So the disabling aspect of diabetes, which is very serious, is not as visible mm -hmm. as a very um, rapid onset of symptoms associated with HIV AIDS previously. Um, because it is a silent disease, because many people don't know what they have, and because many people simply manage it, we are not giving globally enough attention to diabetes. Mm -hmm. Diabetes is a far more important problem today than HIV ever was. Uh, it disables more people. It is associated with uh, a greater magnitude of mortality than, than HIV. And if you think about diabetes from the perspective of its impact on a society, on the economic and social productivity of a society, then clearly we are dealing with a very, very serious global problem. Um, one of the questions that we all have to deal with is how to make the public better aware mm -hmm. of this disease. How to explain to the public that diabetes, despite the fact that it is such a serious disease, is a preventable disease. And I think a large part of the work of the Dasman Diabetes Institute yeah. is in fact focused on how to prevent diabetes in a young population. Yeah, it's uh, on the increase with uh, the younger generation, correct? Well, here children in yeah. and so forth. Yeah. Here in Kuwait, we are beginning to see very young children uh, presenting symptoms of type 2 diabetes. Uh, you have to remember that in the past, we've always thought of diabetes as being a disease of older people. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's clearly now not the case. Um, so that is one of the reasons why at the, at the Dasman Institute, we are focusing more and more on children, school children, working with ministries of education uh, and with the school system. But coming back to your original question of its relationship or its uh, uh, comparative uh, importance uh, in, in respect of HIV, um, as I say, I think the real issue is the public has to understand that they themselves, people on the street, have the capacity to avoid this disease. How can, how can that be? I mean, to tell our audience some of the things that they Certainly can do eating better. to prevent that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we now know for... Uh, and then for in Kuwait, we have an abundance of uh, food and uh, very lavish buffets, which uh, Dr. Manuel, which I'm sure you've seen on your numerous visits yeah. here, yes. And which I thoroughly enjoy. But I think that um, exercise is a major issue. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the case of children, we have to institutionalize the notion of much more exercise in schools and uh, at home and so on. Uh, but even in the adult population, if we could simply get people to exercise more, um, to walk more, to walk fast more, to, Risk use, walking. The to use the shopping malls much more mm -hmm. as, 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 as locations for, for walking, uh, that would help a great deal. Yeah, that has been a trend of late, uh, Dr. Manuel, that uh, a lot of the public now do uh, use the malls uh, mm -hmm. because of the uh, they're quite huge, yep. the malls, and yep. a lot of space for yep. walking, and yes. there's been even groups that have been formed, walking groups, yep. and yep. Uh, they are doing it more, but we'd like to, of course, encourage that and see that more from the public doing that. Well, the more we can do it, the better. Mm -hmm. But, of course, on a, on, on the, from the perspective of diet and eating behavior, um, we know, and I think the public uh, is aware, um, that the fast food industry has not contributed uh, to our health. Mm -hmm. uh, the food may be good, um, it may be reasonably cheap, 
but it certainly is not good for us in when we over. Uh, you eat, eat it too often, I think. We doctor. eat it too often. We rely on it too much. We rely too much on soft drinks that have a high sugar content, mm -hmm. and this in in in, in childhood is 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 really uh, fatal. Um, so I think that um, educating the public with regard to diet, encouraging the public to exercise much more, institutionalizing physical education in schools, these are all things that can and should be done. Um, and I think that if we could have a much more concerted effort on the part of all sectors of society, I think that we could turn around uh, this epidemic in the near future. Yeah, we hope so that that can be uh, at least uh you know, lessened to a degree or reversed as uh, much as we can. And uh, with this kind of conferences and meetings that are held uh, quite often in Kuwait and at Desman Diabetes Institute, just shedding light and bringing uh, people from all over the world together to kind of touch base on these mm. topics is uh, very essential, yeah. Doctor. Do yes. you agree with that? Absolutely. And you've just mentioned a very critical issue. This is a global phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It is not Kuwait, it is not the GCC that is at risk. The, the entire world today is at risk. Of course, the GCC countries and Kuwait in particular have a higher prevalence of diabetes than most other countries. Mm -hmm. So we need a much more consolidated and concerted effort here. But it is a, it is a problem that we've all got to unite around, just as we did with, in the case of HIV. So during this uh, big uh, technical meeting conference to be held in Kuwait, the uh, diabetes and tuberculosis preventing and managing a double burden, an international technical meeting. What are some of the uh, topics that will uh, be discussed uh, through the agenda there? Well, first of all, we're going to look at the global epidemiology of the problem. We're going to look at the uh, epidemiology of the problem in Kuwait and in the GCC area. And here we're taking a look at the uh, beautifully designed poster right there for our mm -hmm. audience, uh, diabetes and tuberculosis preventing and managing a double burden the international technical meeting. That's the invitation with the dates right there, which is tomorrow is the evening registration, dinner and opening address around 6 p.m. And then June 23rd is the presentations, discussion and working groups starting approximately 9.30 uh, a.m. And as you said, uh, it's free of charge free for of charge. all to attend. Yes. Please continue with yeah. what you were saying. Before so that. then we're going to look at the biophysiology of the link between uh, uh, diabetes and, and TB, uh, looking at what, si what are the critical factors uh, involved. Um, we're going to look at uh, the issue of screening. Uh, when and how do you propose to people that they be diagnosed or, or tested for TB? Uh, this is an important issue. We're going to be looking at the ethical implications of all of this. We're going to be looking at the policy implications. And then in the working groups, there will be discussions on research, there'll be discussions on training issues, uh, clinical practice issues. So coming out of this meeting, we will hopefully have uh, a series of recommendations for future action that the Dasman Diabetes Institute and collaborators uh, will take up in the, in the coming year. Yeah, and a I'm very full I'm, agenda. Yeah, and I'm taking a look at the agenda for Sunday uh, uh, many leading diabetologists right here in the state of Kuwait are taking part in this event and uh, also doctors with uh, specialization in TB yes, also right. participating. Right. Yes. Uh, so a very uh, good collection, doctor. I know yes. you, you and uh, some of the staff at Desman Diabetes Institute have been working very hard the yes. past uh, yes. few months. Or so tell us about this hard work of uh, putting this together, sir. Well, first of all, I think the challenge... Especially to get all the people together. First of all, the challenge has been to get this issue on an international agenda. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we were to ask any 10 clinicians in Kuwait or in, in London or in uh, New York, what the link is, there would be a hesitation. Sure. Uh, many people have not thought about it. Yes. Many people have not seen it. Uh, so getting it onto the agenda has been important and there we've benefited tremendously from the capacity of the Dasman Diabetes Institute to take new issues uh, forward. But then there's been a, a, a question of who to bring, uh, how to package all these issues within basically a one day of, uh, of presentations and discussion and working groups. Um, 
uh, in these meetings, it's always important to give time for, for questions. Mm -hmm. And I hope that uh, on Monday we will have a, a very, very thorough interchange uh, from clinicians, from epidemiologists, from policy makers, um, from the private sector, as well as from the public health sector. Yeah, I think that's important, as you touched on, discussion between all the parties uh, leads to some uh, maybe concrete actions in the future, correct? Not only concrete action, but more importantly at this stage, I think, a better sensitization mm -hmm. of the public and of the healthcare professionals as to the nature and magnitude of this problem. Well, uh, Dr. Manuel, it's a pleasure to have you with us on the program. Thank and you as very we're much. winding up uh, this interview segment, can you remind us once again, take a few minutes to remind us once again of the International Conference on Diabetes and Tuberculosis? Uh, when and where will it be held for audience who may be just tuning in right now? Fine. And if registration is still open, how can someone go about registering, Fine. please? So the technical meeting is going to take place on Monday beginning at 9 o'clock in the morning and going on till about 6 in the afternoon. Uh, registration is tomorrow evening, Sunday, beginning at 6 o'clock in the evening, followed by a dinner and a welcome address by Dr. Hilal, the former Minister of Health of Kuwait. Um, and we will discuss Hilal the purpose Asayar, of the meeting. Yes. yes. And, uh, and so that's tomorrow evening. Registration is free. Uh, if you cannot make it to the registration tomorrow night, don't feel that you cannot come on Monday morning. Uh, you're more than welcome. Yeah, and the registration is, uh, uh, I'll put it up on the screens once again right there. It's uh, E-M-A-C-L-E-A-N. Uh, there it is right there. So our audience can jot that down if they'd like to uh, send in their information and so forth. And uh, as we're coming to the end of the interview this evening, Dr. Manuel, any final comments uh, you'd like to share with our audience watching in Kuwait or wherever they may be tuning in around the world this evening? I think I'd probably like to say that um, diabetes, type 2 diabetes in particular, is probably one of the biggest problems the world has ever seen. But we all need to keep in mind that uh, it is a preventable disease. Um, it is a highly manageable disease. Uh, treatments are improving every day but we should not rely on that we must do everything possible to prevent it in the first instance and then if we are unfortunate enough to develop diabetes then we must take action to what we do what we call secondary prevention and that is to say to prevent uh, the most adverse complications from occurring well, we'd like to thank you so much for joining us, uh, Dr. Manuel Carbello, uh, Executive Director at the International Center for Migration, Health and Development, Geneva, WHO Collaborating Center. Uh, we wish you all the best of luck in this conference and hope you enjoy the rest of your stay in the state of Kuwait. Thank you very much for inviting me.